Hello, and welcome to another newsletter from Construction Programs and Results. I'm Michael Stone, and I'll be sharing our newsletter with you. Recently, we have had a number of your fellow contractors contact us about one-on-one -on -one coaching via the Zoom method. These calls run about a half hour, and we, re we review and talk about the problem or problems that the contractor is having. And to date, we have resolved every issue those contractors have called in with. And when the call is done, they are refocused on making good profit for their company. That's as it should be. With these calls, the contractor is getting a second look at the problem and another set of eyes plus 60 years of experience to get the heart to get to the heart of the matter and to get the contractor back on track. Do you need another hand, another set of eyes and ears to help you resolve business problems? If you do, go to our website and send in your request for focus phone time. A link is in the notes below. We will be here for you and glad to help. Now, our newsletter. The cost of being the lowest bidder. Why would any serious construction-related business owner want to be the lowest bidder on a project? In my opinion, there are only three situations where being the lowest bid works out for the business owner. One, you're able to build a job for a lower cost than any other contractor. Two, you have little or no overhead. Or three, you don't care about making a profit. Can you build jobs at a lower cost than other contractors? In my experience, only if you're willing to cut corners. For example, you can use cheaper materials. You can understate allowances so the owner doesn't realize the higher price until the job has started. You can pay employees below average or pay under the table to avoid payroll taxes. You can save money by not pulling permits or ignore inspections to rush the job. All these options will show up in the finished product and upset your clients or cause you legal and or tax problems when they're discovered. After you've burned enough clients with your low-cost, corner-cutting jobs, you'll be out of business. Simple as that. Can you, lower overhead than, can you have lower overhead than another contractor? There are many things that a construction-related business owner can do to reduce their overhead expenses, but in today's market, most construction-related business owners have already taken those steps. If you want to stay in business, some overhead expenses can't be eliminated, like advertising, phones, fuel for your vehicles, etc. Some overhead expenses shouldn't be eliminated if you want to operate legally, like licenses and insurance. You can pretend you don't have overhead, but bills for overhead items will still show up in the mail. Several years ago, a forum I was hosting had a wise old sage who insisted his business had only 3% overhead. It was part of his advertising. He built jobs on cost plus, so he was able to provide the best price because his clients wouldn't have to pay the excessive overhead of other contractors. I asked for a copy of his profit and loss statement, and he sent it to me. It was all smoke and mirrors. He'd listed many overhead items as job cost, and when you correctly categorize expenses, his overhead was at least 18.5%. Playing with numbers is a dangerous game to play, especially with cost plus contracts, and it doesn't change reality. Can your business survive without a profit? Yes, until a job comes along, 
that causes a few more problems than expected. Without a financial cushion, one troublesome job can put you out of business and deep in debt. The truth is that given any set of plans, whether a kitchen or bath remodel, an addition, a new home, or even just a new furnace or water heater, most contractors can build a job. If they follow the same plans and price the same selections, the job cost will be roughly the same regardless of who builds it. That's reality. And generally, prices will be in the same range unless someone is working at being the lowest bid. So you have two choices. You can hope the prospective client buys from you because your price is the lowest, or you can learn how to present yourself, your company, and the job you intend to do so that you become the company that prospective clients want to work with. They can hire a contractor who builds a job on schedule or one who stretches it out because they're disorganized. They can hire a contractor whose employees keep the job site clean or they can live in the dusty, messy project until it's finished. The same job might or might not get built, but the process and experience will be different and the differences will be noticeable, especially when it comes time to recommend you to their friends and family. It's called establishing yourself as a contractor of choice and we covered in our book Profitable Sales, A Contractor's Guide. When you become the contractor of choice, prospective clients can see the difference between the job you'll do and the job your competitors will do. They'll understand that there's more to choosing a contractor than price of the job. If you don't know how to present yourself on a sales call, it's not too late to learn. You don't want to make the sale because you're the lowest bidder. Read Profitable Sales, A Contractor's Guide, and watch our sales training class. Make all your sales profitable. Thank you for watching, and may the profits be with you.